here with Miss Lisa Albrecht of Albright Solar, and we're going to be chatting with her today about her company and also what it's like to be a woman in solar in Chicago. Uh, and finally, we'll be talking about her coaching experience with me. So thank you, Lisa, for being here. I am thrilled to get to interview you. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So tell us about the work you do and why you absolutely love it. Yeah, so I've been in the solar industry since 2007, uh, and I've also been on the board of directors for the Illinois Solar Energy Association, which is a nonprofit that does advocacy work and public education, uh, and I've had a few different roles there, but uh, in 2018, I opened my own company, um, seeing that there was going to be a tremendous amount of opportunity, uh, and I really wanted to um, blaze my own trail. I wanted to call my own shots, and as the solar industry grows, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that the work environment worked for me. I have, uh, my parents are getting a little bit older. I wanted some more flexibility. And as I, you know, advance in my career, I wanted to be my own boss. So I opened Albright Solar in 2018 uh, and it's been a ton of fun. I work with um, small businesses um, and homeowners to go solar uh, on their own buildings. Mm. And it took a lot of guts to take that leap from working for someone else into working for yourself what like what finally put you over the edge why'd you say yes to you yeah uh well my old employer was uh looking at retirement um and so something was going to change one way or the other and i interviewed with a few companies and um i decided to just jump in at that point in 2018 we were in limbo in terms of state policy uh when you look at the advancement of solar across the country it's the states that have the strongest policies is where the strongest market plays. Um, energy is very regulated, whether it's coal, nuclear, or solar. And so really having strong state policy is really important. So we didn't know what our incentives were going to be in Illinois. We just had passed some legislation in 2017, and we're working on the rules. And I jumped in with both feet and figured out that if it didn't work, I, could, I would always be employable somewhere else. But I decided to uh, Good job. It's courageous. And I love that. Sometimes we do need to know that there's a net, like we're going to start and all of these skills that I have that have make me confident that I can succeed as an entrepreneur are also what I can rely on if the policy doesn't pass or if this happens. So I love that you were able to think about that, reason it, and then just go for it. Well, and it wasn't easy. It took a lot of coaching. Uh, it took a lot of reassurance and it took just a lot of trust that I'm highly employable. And so if self-employment didn't work out, that I, I wasn't going to starve to death. I could go get a job, you know, and I could go get a job doing just about anything. So um, I had to remember that and then jump in. And I had very little money at the time. Uh, I did get a micro loan from another woman entrepreneur um, of $1,000 and that was it. And then I just jumped in and, and started started to play. Hmm. It's really inspiring because it shows that if you're really committed to something, you sometimes you just have to take that leap of faith, even if you're not sure how it'll work out. I, I actually had no idea, or I don't think I knew that you took a tiny little micro loan and that was it. What did you do with that thousand bucks? Uh, it, bought groceries. <laughs> yeah, right. It, it really helped. It really helped me survive um, because my my previous employer, like the solar industry, was really struggling at the time. So even my previous employer, my, my wages had gone down. I was an all time low in terms of my own personal income, um, and so it really was just my survival money. So it helped me pay rent in Chicago and buy groceries so that I could continue just developing my company and my business um, and just moving forward as hard as I possibly could. And I know this about you, but our listeners don't, which is, oh crap, what was I going to say? <laughs> which is, I mean, you're pretty awesome. Um, oh no, it fell out of my head. Okay. Well, we're going to move on from that, but I'm sure it'll right. come back to me. But so, uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm trying to decide if this is too much to share. Never too much to share on this show. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, so I was also on the back end of a bankruptcy and foreclosure. Um, so it was a super scary point of, in my life. Um, and I decided that those were market conditions that wasn't because I was a big shopper or 
you know, credit card spender. It was just, I was one of the loans that never should have been given. It was a balloon and lots of other trouble. And so, so things were going in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And I decided that um, in order to turn my destiny around, it meant bold moves. Um, and I, I looked and I contemplated and I thought, you know, what is the fastest place to turn something around? And I decided it was reliance on myself and moving forward on my own path and calling my own shots, that that would give me the biggest financial wins as opposed to being an employee somewhere else. So it was really scary. And again, I feel like maybe I'm sharing a little bit too much, but I think there's a lot of people out there who have, you know, kind of hit what feels like it might be the bottom. Um, and instead, I saw it as an opportunity, again, through a lot of coaching um, and support um, from you very specifically, um, but from, from others as well, and just kind of upping, upping the support in my life and jumping in with both feet and taking risks and deciding that I had it within me to do. Yes. And not only did you have it within you because you are resourceful, you're courageous, you're talented, this is what I was going to say before, is you are so mission driven. So a lot of times being willing to rise up, being willing to get resourceful, being willing to just take that thousand bucks to buy groceries, we have to have a vision. We have to have a purpose behind our work. So for you, why does this work matter? Climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so we are, uh, so world leaders currently, as we're recording this, are meeting in Glasgow right now to for COP26 and to talk about climate change. And um, I actually started in solar before I was trained as a climate speaker through the Climate Reality Project. Um, and solar is one of the biggest solutions um, as we try to decarbonize our electricity supply. Uh, and so um, I, I first joined the industry. Uh, I had a fine job in online advertising. I was in a company before Groupon. Uh, doing what Groupon does now. Um, and uh, it was a fine job, but it didn't fulfill me. Um, and I knew that the one thing that makes me the angriest in life is what we're doing to this planet. And then I tapped into really my soul and realized that the thing that that's inspires me was solar energy. As a seventh grader, I had science fair projects for the next three years. They were all solar related. Uh, and I remembered that passion as a kid. So I retooled myself and joined the industry in 2007. And then, yeah, by 2018, decided to jump in and, and have my own business. So it does help on the bad days. I remember that I have to succeed because the planet needs companies just like mine that are directly putting solutions in place. It absolutely does. And that's part of why I love supporting you too, is because I see the unique way that you support all of us. Um, and I see these, it, I just can't even, like, not only are you in this industry that is always throwing you for a loop, like with legislation and things, but you're also completely unique because you are a woman in a male dominated industry. So what's been most challenging about that? Yeah, so it's changed quite a bit over time. So when I first joined the field, I would go to construction meetings, particularly with big, big, huge commercial buildings. Uh, and I would be the only woman in the room. Uh, and that was challenging. Solar was, is always the last item on the agenda. So, you know, they would start from the foundation and work their way up. And by the time they got to solar, uh, you know, a lot of people had assumed that I was there to take notes. Uh, and then when I would address the plumber, I would address the roofer, I would address the electrician and talk about all the different things that we needed to put into place. And they were always like, whoa, she actually is here for a purpose. Um, since that time, I feel very blessed to work with the, the, the industry association. Um, and I would say that a lot of the policy changes that are happening, um, both at the local, state, and federal level, is because women are causing them. Yes. Um, so, so I don't necessarily feel alone in the industry because a lot of the change makers, in fact, the, the head of the Solar Energy Industries Association, which is the national um, uh, group that works on, on policy, is a woman. Uh, the head of several of the largest solar companies in the country are led by women. Um, so I feel very lucky uh, that, that leadership in this space is very much uh, driven by women. Why do you think women are such powerful leaders in solar? You know, I think when it comes to the work on climate, um, I think that women are very value driven 
and they recognize that this is the time for change and that we don't have an option to fail. We have to win this game. And I think that women are um, really poised well to make that bridge between now and the next generation um, and um, being inclusive uh, and, and making sure that we um, change the game. Uh, you know, we can no longer play by the old rules. We need to change everything uh, from how we power our cell phones to how we drive our cars. Everything needs to change. Uh, and I think women are well suited uh, to have that conversation and to drive that effort. Mm. What do you think makes them particularly well suited? I know you said values driven. Is there anything else? Um, I, I think uh, having a, a, a learning perspective, I think in some ways it is good to be new in a field mm. um, because we don't necessarily have that legacy of, well, this is how things have always been done. Um, but really kind of that entrepreneurial mindset of, well, we can't do that anymore. What else can we do? Um, you know, and then bringing it home and, and seeing the difference that it makes on our children's lives and our grandchildren's lives. And I don't in any way want to disparage that men are not also driven by that. Um, but I do think that women have a unique power uh, to be able to bring that care for Mother Earth. Mm. Um, and I think bringing the spirituality into the workplace, bringing the, the mission there, I think that is um, really well suited for, for women's skills, being strong communicators, uh, being drivers for change. And I think that's something that women can definitely lead in right now. Mm -hmm. And part of what's next for you as an entrepreneur is mentoring the next generation of, is it exclusively women or women and men that are in solar? Uh, no, there's women and men. Uh, uh, in, in the industry and certainly on our board of directors, most companies, you know, most of the installation teams where um, you're actually the boots on the roof, uh, that still remains to be fairly male dominated. Um, a lot of the technical design work also seems to be, um, but when it comes to policy and sales, there's a lot of women in that space. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be the next hurdle, just as the, just like women in tech uh, and getting women coders and things like that. It'll be great to see women in the trades, uh, women electricians, uh, you know, women leading installation teams and things like that. And what I what I think I'm remembering is that you're interested to train people up under you. Is that right? And are yes. you going to take on both women and men, or are you looking specifically at women? Well, initially, um, my goal is to hire women. Nice. Um, I would love to partner, particularly with a woman who wants to get into this space um, to become another me. I would love to clone myself and see another woman entrepreneur open a business as a competitor. You know, when I look at, you know, uh, when I look at the skyline, there are way more rooftops than I can possibly install. And so I would love, uh, we need more competition. We have a planet to save and the old model of competition is not how, how we need to move forward. In fact, uh, the Illinois Solar Energy Association um, hosted an event last month uh, of competitors um, where we were just getting together and celebrating some new milestones in Illinois. And the waitress uh, actually was shocked to find out that we were competitors because we were having such a great time and working so collaboratively together. Uh, and I think that's a really important value that the industry holds is that we have to work together. So we compete for projects, but at the end of the day, we're all working on the same team to save the planet. Uh, such a healthy... <laughs> relationship to competition. I love that. Um, so what is most exciting for you in the solar industry right now? Uh, so Illinois just passed some new legislation. Um, so that's one of the new things. There was a lot of instability. Like, like I said before, the industry tends to be very policy driven. So when policy changes, it creates a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty in the market, uh, you know, which cools off interest. But I love that every day this past week, every time I turn on NPR or even the evening news, they were talking about climate change. Uh, everyone seems to be waking up to the reality um, that the climate is changing and the responsibility that it's ours to fix. Uh, and so I get excited that you know people call me all the time not to save money, but to save you know so that they can reduce their carbon footprint and actually make a statement in their community. Um, so I'm totally inspired on a daily basis that homeowners and businesses realize that they can be part of the solution. So those two things in particular have me the most excited right now. 
I feel so grateful that you are a leader in the solar energy industry in Chicago and can see things that way. Cause I feel like it's the people that are deeply rooted in and are welcoming, you know, more people to come into the industry that initially set that cultural tone. And I don't know if all the people around you are similarly collaborative, but it's so, when you talk about it, I, I feel joy. Like I feel joy hearing you talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I do too. And I think, you know, certainly we have our moments where, you know, you know, everybody is on the level, one level, we are competitive with each other. I do want to win this project. I would want to win that bid or whatever. Um, I do get disappointed like anyone when I, when I am not selected as the vendor. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I do think we do tend to celebrate each other. And, and sure, there's bad actors in this space, just like there's bad plumbers, there's untrained carpenters, the same thing is true in the solar industry, not perfect by any means. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think we are very aligned that we are here for a mission and that the industry itself has big goals mm -hmm. um, besides just making money. And the great thing is that you can make money and do good work, you know? So there's not an awful lot of industries that can say, like I know every day, no matter how many challenges I face, no matter how disappointed I might get, no matter how exhausted I might be in a particular week, at the end of the day, it mattered that I showed up to work hmm. Yeah, every day. And I didn't feel that way when I was in other industries, the way that I feel this. Yeah. Well, let's change gears just a little bit and go way back to when you were working for someone else <laughs> and we started coaching together. What inspired you to start coaching? Uh, you know, I had this sense that there was something else. Um, I, I knew I felt lost. I felt um, I wanted to dip my toe into being an entrepreneur, but I, you know, had my own self doubts. I had a lot of criticism. Like I mentioned, I was going through some tough times financially, um, and I, I just really wasn't certain that I could do it. I, you know, was asking bad questions and coming up with worse answers. Uh, and so I realized that I needed a voice beside the one in my head uh, that you know, is constantly critical, uh, is doubtful, uh, is afraid. Uh, and I needed to counter that voice with um, you know, a different narrative uh, and somebody who could see where I was, who could shed lights on the potholes that might be in front of me um, and make sure that I was on the right path. And if I was, you know, if I needed to turn left when I was thinking I should turn right, that I had a voice that could help me see that, uh, and avoid, you know, avoid any missteps or, uh, uh, encourage me to get my website launched twice or, you know, all, all of the things that needed doing, um, having that, having, a, a, you know, an outside voice, because this voice isn't always, the right voice to tell me what my next moves are. Um, you know, it's much easier to listen to the, well, you can't do that voice than the, hey, okay, you might fail, but you might not. And I didn't necessarily have that part of the conversation of the, well, what if you succeeded? Uh, so uh, coaching helped me find that voice uh, and strengthen it and put it on loudspeaker. Um, in fact, that was some of the things that we practiced was, was putting those good messages on loudspeaker and finding a counter narrative. And yeah, yeah. What have you loved most about coaching? Um, a couple of things. One is the personal development work that goes hand in hand with it. Um, I feel uh, that you know, a lot of my own inhibitions, um, some of them stem from childhood. Not that this is therapy per se, but you know, being able to step outside of my life and look at my patterns um, uh, to find that counter voice, you know, so that I can say, hey, well, what if I stepped into confidence? What would that feel like? You know, so the personal development side of, you know, owning my essence, seeing who I am, looking in the mirror with pride, which is not something uh, that I necessarily uh, have a lot of experience doing. Um, uh, and what was the question? <laughs> what have you loved about coaching? You're oh, and then the other part, um, you know, has been group dynamics. So a lot of my coaching has been in groups and um, just working with other people to see that I'm not alone in my fear, that I'm not alone in, uh, you know, in, in some of the things that I say to myself, but watching other people step into their own power and going, gosh, 
wow, look at what they just did. That's cool. I want some of that energy. I want some of that fun, um, you know, and bringing the, bringing the fun because you show up differently when you're in a group, at least I do. When I'm in a group, I show up differently than when I'm just doing things one-on-one -on -one and I'm inwardly focused as opposed to looking at how we can all succeed. So those are the two things that I've loved the most. Mm. And in our most iteration, uh, most recent iteration of our work together, you were in the mastermind. So share with us, what are some of the things you accomplished during that year? Oof. Uh, so let's see. Uh, launched a second website, uh, which was a little bit scary because my new website is uh, a lot less technical and a lot more personal about me, which felt very scary in a technical field. Um, I have, um, uh, despite all the uncertainty in uh, the state industry, I kept moving forward and moving forward and moving forward despite COVID. Uh, uh, you know, I, I got PPP um, funding, which really helped to finance. I didn't think that I could succeed. I was afraid at applying for that, um, but it was really easy and it was really helpful and it helped bridge that gap. Um, but I kept making the phone calls and kept putting out the proposals. And once the state passed uh, the policy, because of all the groundwork I had laid, I was able to close over a million dollars of solar projects in in just a few weeks, because it was already there. Uh, we just needed the state policy for people to pull the trigger and projects to go forward, so. But it was you showing up consistently, even when there was uncertainty and practicing, like doing the legwork and also the mindset work to do it that had like, had you get yeah. to achieve this beautiful milestone in your business. And there were days, definitely, there were weeks, definitely when I didn't know the state policy was gonna pass in January of 20, 20, then COVID, then it was going to pass in at the end of 2020, and then it was March 21, May 21, August 21, and it didn't pass until September 21. Um, so there were a lot of places where, you know, I could have run, I could have gotten out of the industry and looked for a different job, um, but I just, I, I hung in there. Um, at that point, I was like, well, it's, let's just keep moving forward. <laughs> Uh, and it was, I was really at the end. I was, I was kind of running out of cash, but I, I don't know that I, I, the fearful part of me thought about closing my business, but in reality, the bill was going to pass eventually. So I guess I, my backup plan was I would get a job temporarily, put the business on hold and then revisit it when, when market conditions were, were stable once again, but some days it didn't feel like that. What's made the biggest difference for you in continuing to move forward when there is so much uncertainty. And I ask because for a lot of entrepreneurs, even though maybe there's not as much uncertainty as you deal with, they deal with some of that. So what is your advice for people that are facing uncertainty? Um, I think uh, one of the things that we worked on is maintaining a playfulness. Um, you know, remembering that even if you know, even if you try something and it doesn't work, keep trying, try something else, keep trying what you were doing, um, but it doesn't, you don't necessarily always harvest the results as soon as you plant the seeds. And so just remaining patient, um, up-leveling my support, um, you know, talking to other entrepreneurs in particular, um, having one-on-one -on -one coaching, working within my mastermind group, um, and then also being honest about where I was at, um, you know, not silencing that voice, um, but also not, you know, um, uh, not giving it too much power, you know, so find, trying to find that balance. And some days I did and some days I didn't, but most of the time trying to have a playfulness and just seeing it as a game uh, that, uh, that I was going to eventually uh, win. One of the things that we worked on was gaming uh, and the whole idea of, you know, when you play Mario Kart, you die a lot, you know, and the same thing could be true for entrepreneurships, you know, so, so just having that kind of mentality, but I don't know that I would have thought of any of that on my own if it wasn't for the concepts that, you know, that you introduced through coaching, um, you know, and then just really leaning into, I don't know what I don't know, so I'm going to just keep playing and experimenting, mm -hmm. um, but I think having a gameful mentality and, and, um, and leveling up, I, I start my day each day by listening to um, something inspirational 
uh, and, and then making sure that I check in with my group to see how I'm doing and having some accountability that I said I was going to get this proposal done. Where's this proposal? You know, so up leveling my support and, and visibility within, within the, those fears, but not giving those fears too much credence to stop entirely. Mm. And you mentioned that some of your favorite moments with the mastermind were around learning or gamification. And we did, we had so much fun with this concept, just uh, riffing off of it and diving into it and applying it everywhere. What are some of your other favorite memories from mastermind? Oh gosh. Uh, I actually think some of my favorite memories are watching other people win, <laughs> um, getting to cheer others on in, in their own wins and successes. Um, uh, I'm so inspired by, you know, what big things other people take on and, um, and, and watching, you know, like learning from my own business as you coached other businesses. So in particular, there was uh, someone was working on some financial goals, uh, and those numbers seemed scary. Um, but watching the two of you just break down the math and seeing how math can compound against itself to get bigger than you realize you can possibly get. Um, and so sometimes it's easier to see other people's growth um, than it is to see my own because my own objections of, well, that will work for other people, but that certainly isn't gonna work for me. Don't you know, I'm living the solar coaster, which is what we call the, the solar industry nationwide, the solar coaster, because uh, there's some highs and some fast lows. Um, but so sometimes my own objections stop my learning process. And so watching other people learn um, and um, both from where they win and where they might stumble uh, and seeing how that can reflect in my own life. Um, that's been a huge blessing because I think it accelerates my own growth because I don't have to necessarily go through it. And like I said, it's so much easier to see someone else than it is to see me because the chatter in my head that isn't as creative when I'm being defensive or I'm being cautious or I'm afraid um, it, or even sometimes when I think I'm doing everything right, but there could be a different way of doing something that I'm completely blind to. And so seeing someone else model it uh, is, is sometimes a lot easier. And then the application to myself becomes more natural. <laughs> And uh, I'm going to ask this last question in third person. <laughs> it's a little weird, <laughs> but we're just, since we're doing a mashup of the video, uh, you know, we, we got to do it. Um, you know, for people that are thinking about coaching, uh, there are so many coaches out there, and I do not think I'm the right coach for everybody. Certainly not. Who would you say that Meg is as a coach? Um, I would say that Meg uh is incredibly creative and very playful uh and and is somebody who will honestly explore possibility um will call you out if you need calling out will prop you up if you need propping up or will partner with you when you're looking to collaborate um i i feel like meg I'm going to not talk about you in third person. I feel like you, um, you know, have an ability of ownership um, and um, uh, that uh, you show up authentically, knowing you don't always know the answers, but you, but you try and you create the questions and the possibility um, to point me in the right direction, but all the answers are mine. Uh, and so you leave the ownership here. You might nudge, you might ask questions, but the answers are mine. Uh, and so I feel like, you know, over the three years now that we've worked together, um, I feel like, you know, I didn't come to you necessarily for a tutorial of how to be an entrepreneur, um, but I feel like you've pulled that out of me um, and you've pulled my passion forward and helped me to remember um, you know, what it is that I'm doing and why, so that on those hard days, I can pull myself through it. Um, so you've given me an independence um, and a creativity that has, I'm going to cry, um, you know, that has tapped into my spirit and has tapped into the better part of me that is capable, that does know how to do things as opposed to 
the naysayer who you know looks at my past to say I can't have a different future. Um, and so I feel like you reflect that in the joyfulness that you are and you pull that out of me um, just through creative curiosity um, and asking questions that empower me uh, in a way that I did not know I could be empowered with. Hmm. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's been an honor to get to support you. And I, on behalf of everyone, even the people who don't know it, like, thank you for doing this work to help heal our world and transform our world in a direction where it's going to be around and beautiful for the next generations. Um, the work that you do is so important. And I just love to watch you navigate it and be a leader in that field. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all that you've done over the last few years. I really appreciate your help. You're welcome.